Thank, thanks, Chrissy. Um, great intro. Um, I just before we start, I'd like to thank Vertical Events. Always a, a, a great event and um, great to be in a new destination for me. So um, it's um, yeah, pretty exciting. And I'd have to firstly apologise. I'm actually one of the only um, mining engineers in West Perth that usually does wear a tie. Um, my bag's been lost by Qantas, so this is actually the same uh, suit I was wearing yesterday. So if you come up to the booth and it smells a little bit, that's uh, the reason why. Um, but yeah, usually I do pull out the tie, and, and, and uh, for particularly for special occasions like this. So sorry about the uh, somewhat casual attire. Has Paul tire. Polly gone? Has Paul Polly left the room? <laughs> He's an account taxation account, though, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's pretty rare for a mining engineer to wear a tie, but I usually do, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so this is what we've acquired. Um, two months ago, we bought a nickel mine. Um, it's in Vietnam, and, and it's a very exciting time to be in nickel sulphide. And um, we believe there's a, there's a whole district um, full of these um, nickel sulphide ore bodies. Um, and we've got what looks like a very good piece of infrastructure there, and, um, and, and which gives us an opportunity to really monetize any um, further exploration success that we have uh, in Vietnam. Uh, we also have some other assets. So we have a portfolio of, of both battery and precious metals projects around the world. Um, we've got the BC Cobalt project in uh, just outside of Vancouver, and we're looking for cobalt and gold there. That was, was our flagship asset until uh, recently when we acquired the Taqua project in Vietnam. Uh, we actually listed the company on gold and nickel sulphides out, out of Kalgoorlie and the Pilbara, and we'll talk just quickly about those as well. So the Taqua Nickel Project uh, was operating mine between 2013 and 2016. They mined just under a million tonnes at 2.4% nickel and 1% copper. That's a very high grade massive sulphide vein. They started with a five-year mine life and they mined it out in three and a half. And um, luckily for, for us, they didn't do any exploration. So this was a, a group of uh, investors that didn't understand, I suppose, the, the benefits of, of drilling and, um, and our, our expertise is uh, in exploration. So we're very excited about what we could also find uh, at, uh, in Vietnam. So they actually spent over $130 million and they've left that behind for us to, to monetise whatever we discover. They generated over $200 million worth of revenue and they gave the government $65 million. So the government's very, um, I suppose, excited about the fact that we're now coming back to, to look at reopening that mine. In Canada, we've got some great targets. We went there looking for cobalt, and it looks like there's uh, a lot of copper in the system as well, and we'll talk about that. In Kalgoorlie at Silver Swan South, we're looking for nickel sulphides and gold, and we're near uh, the Silver Swan mine, but also a long strike of the Canana Bell gold mine, which is one of Northern Star's flagship assets. And we've got some ground up in the Pilbara, um, out just now near the Millennium's uh, Nullagine processing facility. So this is a bit of a corporate snapshot. Uh, one of the analysts told me to overlay the cobalt price with our share price and it actually coincides very well. So we've pegged ourselves to cobalt. Um, we still believe cobalt's a great place to be for batteries. Um, one of the um, banks, I think it was Macquarie, said cobalt's still one of the best places to be over the next five years and probably the worst place to be over the next 12 months. So, And you can see that in our share price. So we're still really excited about cobalt, but um, the nickel is where we're at at the moment. Um, you can see our crazy German shareholder uh, just keeps buying more and more. So that's Deutsche Balaton. Board and management, large position with 23%, and then Colstar and Coldbridge are the vendors of our BC Cobalt project. So a very tight structure. We just raised $2 million on the Vietnam acquisition, and that allows us to start drilling, which we hopefully will be starting drilling any day now. So this is a board and management team with over 20 years of experience in running and um, operating junior mining companies, um, taking them from very small companies and, and often being taken over by larger companies. So Hamish Halliday, um, his most successful uh, venture was with Adamus Resources. That was a $3 million float that was um, taken over by Endeavour eventually. So there's a multi-million ounce discovery there. Um, Steve Parsons did a similar thing in Griffin in West Africa and he's actually doing it again now in Bellevue Gold Limited, which is... Uh, 
one of, I think, the best um, up-and-coming gold mining companies in Australia at the moment. So Steve's also on the board, but also a very um, technical team behind the scenes as well, Dr Stuart Owen, um, one of the best geologists I've worked with, and it's been a pleasure to, to um, be part of this team. My background, yes, yeah, co commerce and mining engineering, so uh, underground mining in the, in the gold fields and around Australia. Um, used to work at a little gold mine just out, out from here, actually, at Krakow, which was a great experience. So, yeah, went all around Australia um, as a mining engineer and now have capital markets experience as a mining analyst. So this is Takwa. So we're up near Hanoi. We're 250 kilometres from Hanoi out to the west. Um, and as you can see there, LG Chem and Vinfast, that's a joint venture between um, LG Chem, which is one of the world's largest battery manufacturers, and Vinfast, uh, a local group that are looking at building electric cars. So the reason we've got them on the map is they're, they're building a $2 billion uh, battery mega factory at the port of Haiphong, and that's the port where the previous owners were shipping concentrate. So we're looking not to ship concentrate, we're looking to build battery uh, product, and that's a nickel sulphate. But firstly, we've got a great position and, and a lot of exploration to do before we can sort of really turn this back on, um, and we're really excited to start drilling and really understanding the geology before we rush into anything. So there's a local partner, 10% um, shareholder, very supportive. Um, I took a heap of brokers out to site recently, and, and he, was, he was really excited to meet everyone, and he actually came out of hospital to meet the, the stockbrokers and the investors and because he, he's really, um, I suppose, a big part of what we're trying to do here and, and he's been a shareholder of the, of the asset for over 10 years and very supportive shareholder. Um, so he's the um, Coxima, which is the uh, private Vietnamese group um, that we're partnering with. So this asset, um, we have an option to own the 90%, so we haven't actually acquired it. We, we have, a, have a period over the next one to two years where we can exercise the option by buying uh, or, or offering a million dollars worth of Blackstone shares to the vendor. So the vendor is actually a metallurgist and he's built the plant so he knows all about um, the plant and, and the operating environment in Vietnam. So there's a, a 450,000 tonne per annum concentrator, um, over $130 million sunk into this asset which is, which is a Amazing start for a junior mining company with only a $10 million market cap. So the history is that it was, um, it was actually found back in the 1950s. Uh, modern exploration didn't commence until 1996. They, they started um, building it in the GFC and had to soon um, stop and then restarted around 2012, um, operated from 2013 to 2016. And as I said before, they um, didn't, didn't explore ahead, them, ahead of themselves and, and quickly ran out of ore and, um, and, and moved on. This is a major rift zone. So this um, rift zone actually goes all the way into China. And, and as you hit the border, the nickel mines line up. So there's nickel mines all through China, never really been explored properly on the Vietnamese side of the border. So this is uh, some of the infrastructure. We've got a modern day um, mechanised underground mine. So this mine has been built as if it's in Australia. It's actually been built by Australians. The, oper the operator was a TSX listed company called Asian Mineral Resources. Um, but most of the uh, people that operated this were Australian mining engineers, metallurgists and geologists. So you can see the uh, concentrate shed. So this is the float cells. We've got a 250 person camp. Um, some great infrastructure to leverage off. This is the port down at Haiphong, uh, the tailings facility. This is an internationally certified laboratory. These are some of the critical spares in the, st in the uh, store. We've got two portals. So one of the interesting things, is there's actually two entrances, entrances to the uh, underground and that helps when you want to um, uh, move bulk tonnages. So this is a little bit of a snapshot of what happened to the previous owners and some of the costs that they were, were um, operating with. So they constructed in 2012, they, um, production started in 2013, they got a small kick up in the nickel price, they paid off all the debt and then unfortunately for them the nickel price fell to some of the lowest levels in the last 10 years. They closed it at the bottom of the market. Since they've closed this mine, um, nickel has improved year on year. But most importantly, 
what we're showing here is that is the cost of production uh, when, they, when they were operating. And what we're saying is a nickel sulphides um, will work in any nickel price environment. So if you're looking for nickel, you want to be looking for nickel sulphides because they're the ones that will get you through uh, the bottom of the market. So if they had have kept exploring, they would have been able to keep this mine open. So this is the package of ground. There's over 25 massive sulphide vein targets that haven't been un uh, drilled or understood. So the main mine is in the middle and then there's 25 veins that need to be tested. There's two types of mineralisation. There's disseminated sulphide and massive sulphide. So this is a picture from the underground mine. That's the massive sulphide vein which is the high grade narrow vein that they mined. And this is the disseminated zone. So the disseminated is a much larger body, one and a half kilometres by over a half a kilometre wide, and that's a very large body that's unmined. So on a, on a section perspective, they've mined this vein, which is about two metres wide, they've mined it down to three or four hundred metres, they've left a very large nickel ore body right next to the existing infrastructure. As a mining engineer, I looked at this and said there's definitely something here to be mined. So we need to understand exactly what the mining method is, whether it's underground or open pit or maybe a combination of both. And then there's the 25 massive sulphide veins that haven't been understood. So these are some of the grades throughout the, the region. So you, there's two targets. You've got the big bulk um, disseminated and then you've got these high grade m narrow massive sulphide veins. So these are some of the highest grade nickel, num nickel copper, cobalt numbers you'll see anywhere and also some platinum and palladium in there just to throw in some precious metals. But this is what it's all about. So we, we've been um, looking at the battery space for nearly two years now. Um, it was our, our, I suppose, partnerships or, or relationships that we've built in Korea that have pushed us in this direction. So it's all about taking the nickel sulphide and, and converting it into a nickel sulphate for battery um, end users. So we think that this mine, having the existing infrastructure already built, we can add on the downstream process and really leverage into this battery EV revolution. I actually stole this from Independence Group or IGO. This is, this is, um, th this is another company that's looking at a similar process. So what we'll do is we'll convert it to a sulphate through a, what is called a pressure oxidation process. And the capital required for this is, is um, fairly insignificant compared to the upside that, and the benefit of going further downstream. So Vietnam has an established mining industry. There's over 20 underground mines and over 20 open pit mines. So this is a, an existing uh, industry. The, the government is very supportive, particularly because they were paid taxes. They were, this was one of the highest paying tax entities in the whole country. So they're very, very keen to get this mine back up and running because they know it pays, pays well for, for, for taxes and royalties. It's actually a, it's a key part of the um, Vietnamese mining master plan, which um, has specifically um, stated that the Banfolk Nickel Project is a, a project of national significance and important and that will eliminate some of the, the key um, permitting and approval, approval obstacles that may, may um, exist. So just um, on our other projects in Canada, so we're um, six hours out of Vancouver. This is an, um, an, an old gold mining district called Braylon. Um, they've mined 4.4 million ounces at 17 grams per tonne gold. No one's ever looked for cobalt in this district. We think we've got a whole district full of cobalt potential. There's 48 kilometres of a particular geology that we believe is uh, suitable for primary cobalt deposits. We've got a, a very large sulphide bearing body under the jewel target, so jewel, and then on surface we've got copper, gold and cobalt in soils. So this is a significant sulphide bearing body um, through geophysics. We can see that that IP anomaly is suggesting a large sulphide body and that's, um, that's requiring a lot of drilling. So what we did do is we drilled around this little gem. Little gem was about 3% cobalt and um, uh, nearly an ounce per tonne gold. 
Unfortunately, Little Gem lived up to its namesake and it was too small for a modern day mine. So we've moved on and we need to test some of these other targets. That's the dual target from on the section perspective. We've got copper on surface, high grade gold, high grade um, co cobalt as well. So this is a really exciting target in Canada. And this is why we like it. It's the same geology as Morocco. They've been mining cobalt for 75 years in Morocco. It's a particular type of geology, this contact between an ultramafic and a granodiorite. We think we've got a belt full of it. Over in Morocco, they've got 50 deposits. Um, this is the only primary cobalt mine in the world. So 97% of the world's supply of cobalt is a byproduct of copper or nickel. This, is, this Moroccan Bouazir district is the only primary cobalt district in the world. We think we might have the second one. So we're pretty excited to keep exploring over in Canada. This is where it all started for Blackstone and for me. I went to the Kalgoorlie School of Mines a while ago now. Um, this is the Silver Swan South project. Um, first mine I ever worked at was the Silver Swan mine. That was a 10% nickel mine. So we're after nickel, but we're also after gold as well. We're a long strike of Canana Bell. KB was the second mine I worked at, and that, that's probably one of Australia's best underground gold mines. So the same structure, we believe, is, which is the Fitzroy Shear Zone. So we've got some great gold numbers to follow up on, but also um, potential for um, commodiate style nickel sulfide. That's the Canana Bell um, to scale. That's our gold anomaly to the same scale. So that's the that's showing some of the potential. There's no, no holes into fresh rock, so this is all blind under lake uh, air core drilling. And that's our nickel sulphide. We'll, we'll get onto that as well uh, over time. So we've got an international portfolio of battery and precious metals projects. The, we've got the Taqwa nickel project we've only just picked up um, two months ago. Pretty excited to start drilling at Taqwa any day now. We think this is a mine that has, has many, many years ahead of it. Um, the existing infrastructure allows us to monetize any um, exploration success, which we, we're pretty confident we, we will have. In Canada, we've got some great targets to follow up on. We're looking for, for copper, gold and cobalt now, large uh, sulphide body. But it's got the same geology as Morocco, which is one of the best in the world. A proven track record of discovery and creating shareholder wealth. I've I've got a quick um, slide show that one of our stockbrokers, uh, so I just took eight stockbrokers out to Vietnam. They've done the job for me, so I'll just play this and that sort of should show what we've got over in uh, Vietnam. So this is done by my old shop actually, Hartley's, um, the, the mining analyst that took over from me. Uh, I took him over and showed him around and, and showed him what I think could be a globally significant nickel sulphide project. Great facility there for the processing. That's the underground mine in the background there. That's the entrance to the underground, one of the portals, one of the two portals. So this is an underground mine as if it was in Australia. What we're really excited about is this large unmined disseminated body right next to the existing infrastructure. But we're also excited about 7% nickel. There's plenty of high grade through this system as well, but Firstly, we want to understand the disseminated. So the vendor's done a great job of refurbing the plant. It's all ready to go. We can turn it on whenever we're ready. That's a world-class tailings facility. Uh, Night P's old, some of the um, best engineers you'll find. Hydro grid power allows for a very low processing costs. We've got our own little rig. That's actually about to start drilling. That's Dr Ming, our local geologist, as good as anything I could find in Australia. So. I'm pretty excited about the team we've got here, but also the geology is, is exactly what we're after. We want bulk, tonnage, nickel sulphides, and we want a, a long-term nickel mine and a, and, a, and a government to support us and a good broker as well. <laughs> Thanks.